Thursday is May 10th edition of Back Roads of Illinois with Cesar Delgado, your Central Illinois Agriculture Source, and the Midwest alongside in Central Illinois Agriculture, we are glad you're here. Today is the World Supply and Demand Estimate report at 11 o'clock Central Time from the Department of Agricultural in Washington, D.C. I chatted with some farmers. I asked them about trade in the Safe Creek program. However, they are currently considering how to make money and more yields for this season. By the way, the Congress are bogged down between the Republicans and Democrats about the farm bill, but it has been potentially get to be worried about the yields and the bottom line. The farm bill is out of the window for some farmers in the United States. We specialize in providing the information on ordering other stuff than the farm bill. Our guest today is Jeff Cooper. We will talk about Safe Creek Program with Jeff Cooper from Renewable Fuel Association with Jeff on the Creek model from last week. This is your agricultural news on back roads of Illinois. The weather is pretty wet in central Illinois and across the Midwest alongside in central U.S. This week's tornadoes and violent storms in down Oklahoma and Kansas for these storms for this week. This month is a beef month. We celebrate our cattle farmers and ranchers in the country. Alongside with the bird flu in Texas, Kansas, Michigan. However, we didn't see the influenza in the meat and milk. Finally, Brazil hit heavy flooding for their harvest season. Brazil's soybean production has fallen into the yields nearly 50 bushel per acre in Manto Grasso and Parna, Mato Grasso Sussal. We were keeping the eye on. This is your Commodity Markets Update Minute on Back Roads of Illinois. Corn futures finished in up 8 to 9 cents per bushel. Soybean futures finished in up 3 to 2 cents. Wheat futures finished in up 7 to 8 cents. Now that we are going to talk about the livestock market for today on this morning. Cattle futures finished and down 8 to 9 cents per weight feed. Their cattle finished and down 3 to 2 cents. Lean hogs finished and down 8 to 9 cents. We were coming back with Jeff Cooper from Renewable Fuel Association in St. Louis, Missouri. Stay tuned on Back Roads of Illinois. I'm joining with Jeff Cooper from Renewable Fuel Association in St. Louis, Missouri. How are things in St. Louis, Missouri, and the center of the country? Well, Caesar, thanks for having me. Things are things are good in St. Louis. Uh, we've had a lot of rain in the past couple of weeks, uh, probably five or six inches just in the last two weeks. Uh, Cardinals aren't doing so well so far, so that's that's maybe a, a bit of a bummer for us uh, baseball fans here, but uh, otherwise things are good here in St. Louis. My Cubs is pretty good. Yeah, they are. They're off to a good start. Let's start with our conversation about the Greek program by this administration for jet fuel. What is your thoughts about it? I know that the regenerative agricultural, they've supported it. 
Yeah. So the Biden administration did uh, very recently finalize the updated version of what's called the GREET model. And that's the model that the Department of Treasury is going to use to determine eligibility for tax credits for sustainable aviation fuel. And so we've been watching that process very carefully, very closely. And this new model that was released, uh, you know, we think there is a lot to like about the model. We think there's a lot to like (coughs) about the direction that this is headed. And we think it does begin to open the door for ethanol and and corn-based ethanol to play a much larger role in sustainable aviation fuel moving forward. And and we do now, because of this new model, have pathways uh, and methods where sustainable aviation fuel made from corn-based ethanol can qualify for those tax credits. And that's going to be really important to making sure that farmers and ethanol producers uh, have a seat at the table and a role to play as we look at sustainable aviation fuel moving forward. I'm confused. Why not the Department of Agriculture get involved in because of the agricultural issue? Right. That's a great question. And in fact, the U.S. Department of Agriculture was very involved in this process. Uh, But because this is a tax credit, it is ultimately the jurisdiction and the responsibility of the IRS which is part of the Department of Treasury, to administer this tax credit program. And so all of this falls under their jurisdiction and their responsibility. But they also realize uh, that the IRS doesn't have a lot of expertise when it comes to agriculture. And so they did rely on many of the experts at USDA to help develop this model and help ensure that it was doing a, a better job of reflecting what is actually happening on the farm today. And so there is really for the first time, this model does include uh, some some climate smart agriculture practices. You mentioned regenerative uh, ag practices. Uh, and certainly those have the ability to reduce carbon emissions and reduce the carbon intensity of biofuels like ethanol. And so some of that is is built into this model we think there are still some improvements that need to be made and, and uh, you know, there's a ways to go, but it it, it is progress. Um, and again, USDA did have an active role in this, this, this entire process. How do you see impacting the farmers in the Midwest alongside with this new GREET program? Well, again, this, this GREET model and this tax credit, begin to open the door to the opportunity for farmers to to really participate in sustainable aviation fuel. And this is potentially an an enormous market. Uh, This country uses about 25 billion gallons of jet fuel every year. And so you can see how large the market opportunity could be for U.S. agriculture. Now, we think, you know, again, there are, are, are improvements and tweaks um, and enhancements that need to be made to this 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 model and to this entire process uh, moving forward. But this does begin to uh, get U.S. agriculture into the game when it comes to sustainable aviation fuels. Uh, so, we, you know, again, there's a lot of pieces that need to fall in place and a lot mm-hmm. that needs to happen still yet. But uh, we're excited about what this could mean for U.S. farmers. What is your sources for Brazil's ethanol industry for right now? Could you explain to us for this issue? Yeah. So, uh, you know, unfortunately, prior to this new Greek model being released, the only ethanol that would qualify as a source for sustainable aviation fuel was uh, Brazilian sugarcane ethanol that was imported into the U.S., uh, that obviously concerned us for, for many reasons. Um, and this new GREET model helps to level that playing field and, and helps to allow U.S. corn-based ethanol uh, to, to qualify for sustainable aviation fuel. But we've been saying for, for years 
um, that it's, you know, the, the regulatory agencies that are in charge of uh, the, the renewable fuel standard and the California low carbon fuel standard and these tax credits, th they need to get together and reevaluate and reexamine the carbon impacts of sugarcane ethanol uh, because, you know, currently that product is favored um, and, and is advantaged over U.S. corn-based ethanol, and, and we don't believe that is uh, accurate or, or supported by the science, and we think it's time to reevaluate the environmental impacts of sugarcane ethanol. Uh, and we right, num Number one is, uh, despite some of the challenges we, we face uh, around the globe, we, we are seeing very strong demand for U.S. ethanol, uh, both domestically and in the export market. We are seeing in, in recent months some of the strongest levels of, of exports that we've seen ever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're actually on pace for a record amount of ethanol exports this year, which is which is great news for the industry um, and great news for the corn growers that supply our industry. Um, and at the same time, we are seeing uh, increased demand here domestically because we are expanding the use of higher level blends of ethanol. E15 in particular, uh, but also flex fuels like E85 are continuing to grow in the marketplace. And that is helping spur very strong demand for U.S. produced ethanol. And that's, again, that's great news for farmers. Um, you know, we are expecting uh, uh, ethanol demand to be stronger this year than it was last year and, and, and to continue expanding, especially when we think about, you know, new opportunities and new markets uh, developing as well. When you start, you know, moving some ethanol into the aviation fuel market, that's new demand, that's additive demand. Uh, and that just grows the, the overall, uh, consumption of, of ethanol, which is going to be good for, for agriculture. So we are quite bullish and, and quite optimistic about the future of, of ethanol in this country. Yes, I hope things are going well for this growing season for our farmers and ethanol production. Yeah, and, and so far we're off to a good start. Like I like I said at the beginning, it's been really wet for a lot of people across the Corn Belt. Uh, so that has, you know, slowed planting down in, in a lot of places. But I also know that that moisture was very much welcomed in, in a number of, of uh, uh, pockets in the Corn Belt that have been very dry the last few years. And we've seen a lot of those drought pockets sort of disappear in the last month or so because of all this rainfall. So I, I think uh, overall, we're off to a great start to the, to the season. Um, of course, uh, it's really July and August that sort of make or break the corn crop and, and we have a long ways to go, uh, but things are off to a great start. And, and again, we've got, a lot of demand. We got demand for for basically five and a half billion bushels of corn in the ethanol industry, and we expect that to grow long term. Uh, so we are uh, we're excited about what the future holds for for our industries this year. Jeff, what is there anything would you like to go to say about the year around three fifteen? Yeah, that's another issue that we are continuing to. Uh, pursue and and have been uh, actively pursuing for a number of years. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we are not able to sell E15 year round in this country because of a 30 year old antiquated regulation uh, that that needs to be changed. Um, and so every year we get to the springtime, and there's a lot of uncertainty around whether E15 will be allowed to be sold during the summer or not. And uh, we were fortunate in, in that this year, EPA and the administration provided emergency waivers again. They've done that uh, each of the past two years, and they're doing it again for this summer. And that does allow E15 to be sold through throughout the summer and year-round, um, which again is, is very important because it helps keep a market open for ethanol producers and corn growers uh, year round. Uh, now we need a permanent solution for that issue. And we are 
pursuing legislation that would fix this once and for all. Uh, but, uh, you know, the second best option, at least, is getting these emergency waivers that we've seen the past few years. A lot of mixed emotions for the ethanol industry. Yeah, that, that's right. I mean, we, it, we've we had a, a, a mixed bag when it comes to uh, policy developments and policy support over the past several years. Um, you know, we, we've seen some good and we've seen some bad. Uh, and the industry, you know, has been able to navigate that and, and to continue growing and, and expanding and, and continue improving. I mean, that's the other thing that we see in this industry is remarkable progress in the efficiency um, and technology adoption around making our, our, our process uh, even better and, you know, having lower impacts on the environment than ever before. Do you have any final thoughts on Brazilian production and safe grid program E15 Jeff? Well, I think we pretty much covered the the, the highlights. Um, yeah, I guess the 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 final point I would just restate is uh, whether we're talking about E15 or whether we're talking about uh, imports from Brazil. Uh, all we're asking for is is a level playing field and the ability to compete. Uh, we are very proud of, of the product uh, that, that our industry produces. It's a great product that brings a lot of valuable characteristics to, the, the, to, to our nation's fuel and to our world's fuel. Um, and so if, if we're just allowed the opportunity to compete in the marketplace, uh, we are very confident that the future is going to be bright for, for the ethanol industry. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thanks for having me, Caesar. I, I appreciate the opportunity and hope to talk to you again soon. This is Jeff Cooper from Renewable Fuel Association in St. Louis, Missouri. We were back with our last segment on Back Roads of Illinois. Thanks. Jeff Cooper from Renewable Fuel Association. Well, folks, there's our show for today. You can subscribe to our show on YouTube and Amazon. Thanks for listening for today for Back Roads of Illinois. I am Caesar Delgado. Have a good day.